Hello, I'm Dr. Julie DeCesar. I'm part of the FPQC team that has launched the um, PAC initiative to optimize our postpartum care. Today, we're going to be talking about how to bill for that early postpartum visit or the post birth health check. So, remember that the recommendations are that all pregnant patients be seen twice in the postpartum period. We like the term post-birth health check because what we're doing is we're really trying to optimize our patient's health and minimize any sequela from complications that might occur in the postpartum period. So overall, um, many um, providers across the state of Florida have um, brought up concerns um, over how to bill for these visits. And certainly as someone um, myself who um, has a component of my practice that's productivity, these billing concerns are really important. When we consider Florida Medicaid, most of our Florida Medicaid um, plans are fee-for-service only. So billing for those postpartum visits when you have a fee-for-service visit really shouldn't be a problem. In addition, if you have a patient with a problem in the postpartum period, so for, say, for example, she, pre she presents with some um, postpartum depression, you can bill an ENM service code um, based on management of depression. In addition, if she needs to discuss contraception, there is a code. You can bill an ENM code for, um, you know, encounter for contraceptive surveillance or a new prescription. Aetna and Molina are global reimbursements with some exception. And then Humana does have some global obstetrical um, reimbursement, does but also does more of a fee-for-service model. So, you know, just overall, to summarize, there's four main ways that you can optimize your billing. One of the things that you can do is billing outside that obstetrical package. So for example, if you have a patient that presents anapartum and you diagnose and treat an acute bronchitis, you bill that visit as pregnancy incidental and you build an ENM service code. Um, you can do the same thing in the postpartum period. That's completely appropriate. Another thing you can do, and this is what I tend to do on my global OB packages, I end the global period early. Um, so that first visit I'm billing is that global visit. And then that second visit, I'm billing outside that global package. Um, oftentimes, I'll bill the well woman visit service code at that point. Another option is you can, if you're worried about bumping into some insurances have a requirement, for example, you can't do a well woman exam within so many months of a birth, what you can do is schedule that second postpartum visit outside of that six week um, period so that you can capture that reimbursement. Um, that's a really good strategy on a patient. And remember the postpartum period doesn't end at six weeks. It it really can sometimes um, continue um, up to um, a year postpartum. And then, you know, another thought is to trade an antepartum visit for a postpartum visit. So you can, you know, perhaps reduce the number of antepartum visits you have and then pick up an additional postpartum visit. Um, sometimes I find you know, the visits when I switch to two, you know, for 28 weeks, every two weeks, um, depending on the week and timing, sometimes we see those patients every three weeks or potentially space out a visit in their in the first trimester. So these are just some of the options um, that we have for optimizing billing in the postpartum period. Thank you.